If you want to go join that volleyball game, Adam, it's okay by me. Why not take a break? Um, I don't think so. I don't really know any of those kids. It's always that way when you move. Sooner or later, you make friends. It'll happen. Sure, maybe later. Okay, Lab Rat. If you're going to stay inside, come give me a hand with this. Sure, what's up? I found another bird this morning. These oil spills, they make me so mad, I, I can't see straight. Anyhow, let's see what we can do about it. Take a closer look, uh, then get a rag ready. The seagull is covered with oil and shivering miserably. Adam takes the bottle of detergent. Adam takes the clean rag. Adam puts some of the dish soap onto the clean rag. Great. Hold on a sec. Easy now, pal. Try to apply the soap with the grain of the feathers. That'll get most of the oil without breaking them. Gross. Will a bird die? He might. It depends on how much of a shock he's had. We're going to do all we can. Why don't you finish up? Should I take him outside and let him go? Not just yet. The soap removes his natural oils too, and that's what makes him float. He'd be shark bait until they build up again. We'll take care of him and hope for the best. I wish there was something more we could do. Me too. I feel like all we do is clean up after the fact, and it doesn't work too well. Even this fertilizer solution I'm working on for cleaning up the surface depends on too many factors, such as water temperature, current, stuff like that. I think this mix is better. It might even work on the coral a little bit. Try it out if you want. Blast! I'm late again. All these meetings are getting to me. So, do you want to go outside or stay here and maybe work with the dolphin? He's not recovering well from being entangled in that drift net. He could use some encouragement. Wow, could I work with a dolphin? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just look at my instructions on the blackboard in the treatment room first, though. We have to make sure we're all doing the same thing with him. Gotta run. Committees.
Oh man, I forgot to give him the water. Oh man, I forgot. Adam's gerbil lives in this cage. Adam's gerbil. Adam generally prefers to talk to those who can talk back. Adam attaches the full water bottle to the gerbil cage. I guess that hits the spot, huh? Adam picks up the empty soda can. Wow, cool, my membership card. The envelope is torn and useless. It's been forwarded too many times. It's the hint book for Echo Quest. Certificate Apprentice Dolphin Handler. The bearer, Adam Green, has completed a 50-hour course in animal husbandry and rescue techniques. Felicitations, Adam. Slam dunk. The oil has begun to sink to the bottom. Adam carefully pours some of the solution into the tank. Bacteria from the fertilizer solution breaks down the oil into harmless chemicals. Adam picks up the torn envelope. Jordan, look out! Slam dunk! Adam's dad is working on an article called Sonar Transmitters Revolutionize Toxic Salvage. An empty box has been left for a graphic with the note, see blackboard diagram. 55 Fun Ways a Kid Can Make a World of Difference by Michael O'Brien. Neato, they put it in the Echo Quest box. The Stoon Environmental Action Guide, Earthworks Group. The Book of Whales by Richard Ellis. Vegetarian Macrobiotic Cooking. Aw, oh, Dad, no way. The Rainforest Book by Scott Lewis. 55. This is a reusable bag Adam uses when he goes diving to collect garbage. Adam picks up the garbage bag. He plans to use it to pick up trash when he goes diving later. This rug in the shape of planet Earth is Adam's favorite. He takes it wherever they move. It's the hint book for Echo Blah, blah, blah. A shielded cable attaches the float to the object for salvage.
The dolphin brought in by the fisherman is swimming in slow circles. The vet says that it has capture stress syndrome. A set of instructions ensures that all helpers treat the dolphin alike. The propeller is covered with a metal cage. That way an animal who swims too close won't get cut by the blade. The dolphin appears depressed and lonely. Hi! Hey, you're swimming better than yesterday. You'll feel better in no time at all, and we can take you home. You've had a tough time, but we're not trying to keep you or anything. We're just trying to help you get better. Adam's soothing voice got through to him. It looks like he's decided to make friends. The Adam picks up a mackerel. The dolphin chows down on the mackerel. Adam picks up a mackerel. Yes, he swallowed another one. Adam picks up. Well, I guess he's done. Moving slowly and carefully, Adam climbs into the pool. He can feel the dolphin's delight at having some company. The weird clicking sound means the dolphin is memorizing Adam by bouncing sound waves off him. It's called a sonar click. That was fun! Do it again! Hey, where are you going? Whoa, good one! You're making me dizzy! Catch me if you can, huh? The dolphin offers his dorsal fin to Adam. He wants to give Adam a ride. What? Adam cups his hand and the dolphin swims up under it and pulls Adam into a whirling, swooping ride around the pool. Hey, thanks. That was the greatest. The dolphin looks really frisky now that he's pulled Adam around. He wants to play some more. <laughs> Adam takes the green frisbee. You're barking up the What? You talked? Did I? Oh, I guess I did. Er, I guess the hermit's out of the crab, so to speak. 
Allow me to introduce myself, Adam. And you know my name? Nothing wrong with my hearing, above or underwater. As I was trying to say, my name's Delphinius. Del or what? Delphinius. Got it? Delphinius. Got it. Complicated name. Cetus, <laughs> our great whale king, named me. Of course, it sounds different in our language. Sort of like this. I believe your human scientists call that my signature whistle. I also speak tuna and some of the more obscure coral dialects. Those are too high-pitched for you to hear. Anyway, they're only useful in my kingdom. Cool! Your kingdom? Right, my kingdom. It's... Oh no! My kingdom! Cetus! I remember now. I don't know what I've been thinking. How long have I been here? About a week. You're in pretty bad shape. A week? What a disaster! I've got to get out of here right away! Hold on! I'm not getting this! What are you talking about? What's the matter? That's me all over, just rushing straight ahead, not looking where I'm going. That's how I got into this mess in the first place. When I ran into that net, it's because I was searching for Cetus. He's missing and I was sent to find him. Maybe he's in trouble, or hurt, or worse. I have to find out before it's too late. Adam, please help me get out of here. <laughs> of course I'll help you, Dolphinius. There, I've opened the hatch. Dad said you were almost ready anyway, so he wouldn't mind. I guess this is it. I'd say to thank your dad, but he'd think you were nuts. My dad might surprise you. Are you sure you have to go? Cetus is my king, Adam. If he needs my help, I can't fail him. But I won't forget you. I won't forget you either, Dolphinius. Good luck. Adam watches sadly as Delphinius swims out to sea. <laughs> A familiar figure appears on the horizon. Delphinius, I'm so glad to see you. I've been wondering what happened to you all week. Did you find your missing king? No, things are worse than ever. Gotta catch my breath. Slow down, take your time. What do you mean? Strange things are happening in the kingdom. Oh, it's too hard to explain. If only you could see it. Well, I could see it. I'll just go back there with you. You, a human? You must be joking. Human lungs could never last where we'd be going. You'll have to get ready, Adam, before I could even consider it. Adam picks up the diving equipment and the transmitter. Okay, now I'm ready. I've got everything. Hurry up then. I have the worst feeling we don't have much time. Adam empties his pockets. He puts on his fins, gloves, and mask and jumps into the water. You lead the way.
away for a while, Adam. I'm still trying to get my sea legs back. Ha ha. Oh, yuck. Look at all that putrid stuff. That's why they call it bilge. It's all their garbage, everything, and I do mean everything. Hey, look at that kid. He's about to lose control of the balloons. Hey kid, look out. The wind's too strong. He's gonna let go. Oh no, the wind was too strong. Those babies were filled with helium, too. They can drift hundreds of miles till they sink. Adam picks up the glass jar and stows it away in his pack. Adam puts an item in his garbage bag. The water is a bit clearer. Adam has cleared a narrow path through the garbage. Delphinius will offer his fin to Adam when he wants to take him for a ride. Hey, it's... Adam can't get to that piece yet. There's still too much stuff in the way. Adam can't get to that piece. Time to dive, Adam. We're close to the boundaries of my kingdom, Ilaria. Do you still want to go on? Oh, yes, Dolphinius. Do you think your friends will let me help? Maybe not at first, Adam. They're pretty afraid of humans, you know. Bad experiences and all that. But they sent me for help and I'm bringing it. I'm bringing you. So get ready to die. Adam checks the pressure in his tanks, wets his mask, and clears his regulator. Oh, my head! I feel kind of funny. I mean, funny, peculiar. Maybe we ought to go back. You could still be hurt. No, it's not that. I think there was something in that garbage we swam through. It interfered with my sonar. You know, my direction-finding senses. What do you want to do? That's a lot of tangled seaweed up ahead. We have to go through. Cetus used to clear a path for us, but it's gotten overgrown. There's one way through. I can follow if you lead. Okay, I'll try. I'm pounding on you to find our way through the weeds, Adam. Wow! She is beautiful, isn't she? 
Her name is Illyria, my home. I think you need to talk to the Oracle. The Oracle of Illyria can see into the future. If anyone would know what you should do to help the city, it would be her. I'd better go see what's been going on since I left. I'll be at the fish apartments if you need me. Good luck, Adam. A long string that has narrow red shapes tied to it floats by. Adam thinks it looks familiar, but it's gone before he can remember where he's seen it before. Adam picks up the steel cage, thinking that it might come in handy. One of Adam's teachers used to talk about trash on TV, but this television is trashy without even being turned on. Adam dumps it in his garbage bag. Adam puts the soaked and scraggly-looking bear into his trash bag. Adam transmits the radio into his garbage bag. Fortunately for Adam, the shopping cart is collapsible. Adam stuffs it easily into his garbage bag. The sad little beach ball, flat as yesterday's newspaper, sinks slowly into Adam's trash bag. Adam trashes the three-wheeler. It looks like someone's thrown away a desk chair, the kind that rolls around on the floor. Adam wheels the desk chair into the twilight zone of his garbage bag. Since the ancient Greeks didn't have modern plumbing, Adam guesses that the pipe is merely a result of more human littering. Wisps of Adam ditches the pipe. With a feeling of satisfaction, Adam picks up the last piece of garbage in the Illyrian courtyard. Now that looks better. A pedestal stands in the middle of the temple. On top of the pedestal is a large conch shell. Adam takes the bronze conch shell. Adam is swimming in front of a large and impressive bronze statue. The conch shell does look like it belongs to the... Adam places the bronze shell into the cupped hands of the servant keeping his fingers crossed that this will work. The bronze servant comes to life and puffs out his cheeks for a mighty blow. Poseidon has loosened his grip on the trident. Adam pulls on the bronze trident and it slides easily from Poseidon's fist. On the wall is a mosaic tile picture. It looks like the seawater has caused the cement around the tiles to weaken, and now the picture is scrambled. Choose the there. Adam sees Adam. Choose the.
choose the Choose a tile next. Choose it. That's it. The mysterious mosaic is now fully revealed. An odd carving of three large eyes dominates the center of the back wall of the temple. The trident pushes in the three eyes, and the wall trembles. A panel slowly opens. A fish appears mysteriously from somewhere behind the panel. It must be the oracle. The oracle knows all life in the sea. But, creature of man, I know not thee. My name is Adam. I came here with Dolphinius to help save the kingdom. What can I do to help? A prophecy from ancient year spoke of days of death and fear. A human boy, kind and brave, would the kingdom of Luria save. Three riddles will your soul reveal. Use your heart, the truth to feel. Here's the first riddle to master from the picture Choose an answer. Whose march of progress dooms us all, lives aloof to nature's call, before he walks must learn to crawl, and be a friend to great and small. Adam is swimming in the Whose march of progress There's a symbol of a man in the who Is the answer man? The riddle you have answered true, a vision will I grant to you. Once there was a great whale king, whose tail kept off all poisonous things. Like under glass, we live so free, from all with which man kills the seas. Here's the second you must master. From the picture, choose an answer. What glides like a bird, but does not fly, lives and plays neath an emerald sky, feels the hook's pain, but cannot cry, has no voice to question why. Is the answer a fish? The riddle you have answered true, a vision will I grant to you. And so an innocent must fall, and become the stalker of us all. Mutated by a glowing breeze, man makes a murderer of the seas. Here's the third and last to master, from the picture, Choose an answer. What reaches out to those in need? Hears the call of those who plead. Never blindly takes in greed. Is a friend in word and deed. There's a symbol of a heart in the mosaic picture. What re- Is the answer love? The riddle you have answered true. A vision will I grant to you. A mighty king was led astray tricked and lured into harm's way. With all his strength he cannot free himself from man's machinery. Our destiny now lies with he, foretold within the prophecy. 
The prophecy says a child of man might help save Illyria. Could that be me? Your answers show that you can see the carelessness that haunts the seas. But the citizens must give their trust to you alone. Win them, you must. This sign of trust bring back to me, and you shall have the prophecy. You met the oracle, huh? What'd she say, Adam? What'd she say? She says I should find a sign of trust from the citizens. What could she mean, Dell? Hmm, a sign of trust, eh? Beats me. Maybe you should talk to the city's mayor and the guardian of the greens. If you can find them, that is. I've seen hardly anyone since I've been back. It is kind of creepy. Where do you think I should look for the mayor and the guardian of the greens? Somewhere indoors. I'll meet you back at the fish apartments later. Come by if you can't find who you're looking for. Halt! Who dares enter the chambers of the great senator? The booming voice seems to come from nowhere. Though seeing no one in the room, Adam tentatively calls out. Who? Who are you? I am me, which is to say, <clears throat> the great senator. Tremble before me. Oh, well, okay. I'm Adam. Delphinia has brought me here to help. Adam? I know of no Allurians named Adam. He, you're human, a son of man, here, where is that blasted blubber farm of a whale? What whale? You mean Cetus? Of course, Cetus. But I didn't say blasted blubber farm of a whale, not me. I never said that. Benevolent, impressively large whale is what I actually said. Great Cetus maketh the food plentiful in the city pure. He banisheth the sharks and conger alike. He maketh the water clear, and filtereth the yucky stuff. Oh, and he maketh us cleanseth behind our gills. But Cetus is missing. I know that. Alas, poor Luria, Cetus has vanished. For lo, many days, Cetus is gone. Only Poseidon knows where he has hithered to. But fear not. For the great senator will personally see to it that Eluria, great kingdom, survives. How will you replace Cetus, great senator? Things look a mess to me. Maybe I could help. Help? You? The great senator needs no help. The great senator has not acted because he is still pondering the situation. If you're so smart, try solving the challenge of the columns. What challenge of the columns? Find the one that turns no other, make it match its right-hand brother, repeat until all nine are done, and the council's favor you will have won. And now I will answer no more questions, human boy. The great senator will now stay silent and silently ponder. Whoa, the column pieces move. Now I wonder what order I should put them in. The column piece locks into place. It now matches the corresponding column piece on the right side of the council chambers. Adam doesn't... The column piece locks into place. The column piece... Lo the column piece... The column piece lo that that the column piece lo that piece is the column piece the column piece locks into place that piece the last column piece shifts into place Adam feels the water tremble
The room shakes as the building settles down on the columns. The gold mask is knocked from the wall. A dazed hermit crab stumbles from the fallen mask. Boo hoo! Oh, boo hoo! I can't handle it. I can't. I tried, but no one will listen to me. No one cares. Oh, boo, boo hoo! Who are you? I'm the great sin. Oh, I mean, oh, I'm a nobody. Boo hoo! I'm a failure. Boo hoo de hoo! Well, why are you hiding in the mask? My name is Superfluous. I've always been the mayor, but I never actually had to do anything. Cetus took care of it all, you see. Now he's gone, and I ought to do something, but I don't know what. Well, gosh, you need to call a meeting or something. Get everyone to help. Oh, they won't listen. Why do you think I pretended to be the great senator? They might have respected him, but no, they're all huddled in their homes, scared. They won't come out for a meeting. Not that I can blame them. Here I sit with the shell so tight I'm about to burst, and I'm too scared to go out and find a new one. <laughs> well, maybe I can get the citizens to come out. Why should they listen to you, a human boy? Why, I don't even trust you. No, sorry. I don't think it would work. It would be nice if it could, though. Goodbye now. I must go back to my pondering. Adam wheels the rubber to a permanent parking spot. Adam reels in the old fishing line. Adam carefully picks up the brown shoe and does the world a favor by throwing it away. With great relief, Adam cans the can of broccoli. Adam slams the soda down, his garbage bag. Adam puts the spritz on the spray bottle. Adam rides the wheel into the trash. Adam snatches the purse and bags it. Adam decides to be nice and clean up the old pot. The cobblestones add a bit of beauty to this poor, dying garden. Adam doesn't want to disturb them. Adam slowly slips the sheet into the sack. Good job! Adam may not be able to reverse all of the damage to the plants in the royal gardens, but at least he's removed all of the visible litter. A huge, beautiful shell lies in front of the whale statue. Adam hears a nervous clicking inside the shell but the shell is too heavy to lift. Adam is carrying a clear glass jar. There's a lid on the jar. Adam's carrying a tra Adam's carrying a flask of his father's experimental fertilizer solution. The solution helps create bacteria that eat oil. Unfortunately, it still has a long way to go before it can be used to really impact large spills. Don't worry, Coral. This is fertilizer solution from my dad's lab. I'm not sure if it will help you, but without it, you'll die for sure. Adam carefully pours the fertilizer solution over the whale-shaped coral. He puts the empty flask into his garbage bag. The oil begins to dissolve. It's working! What are you doing to my coral, child? 
I just put some solution on the coral that will create bacteria to eat up the oil. I only meant to help. I felt so sorry for the poor coral. A human? Feeling sympathy for the creatures of the sea? Why, you're right. The oil is dissolving. What is your name then, Magic One? My name is Adam, but it's not magic, just science. Who are you? I am the guardian of the greens, but you can call me Demeter. It is my job to tend the royal gardens and ensure that the city has plenty of plants to eat. But as you can see, my garden is all but dead. What will you do when the plants are gone? We will be forced to leave Luria, or die here. I'm not sure which is a worse fate. If only Cetus were here. The coral miss him so. You know they shape themselves like this in homage to him. If only I knew Cetus was somewhere safe. I could be content with this lot. Well, I came here with Dolphinius. We're going to try to help save the city and maybe find Cetus. You would do that, human child? Perhaps that's just what we need. Someone who knows the mysteries of man and the poisons he puts in the sea. Here, take this with you. What is this? It is the last of my healing potion. It has a great power to heal. I used to make it from over 30 rare sea plants, but most of them are extinct now, killed off by poisons. There'll be no more potion. The potion does not work on my poor garden. Perhaps you will find a good use for it on your quest to save the city. Thank you for this gift, Demeter. Use it wisely, human child. And may Poseidon watch over you. The fertilizer solution is working. The oil and tar on the coral is slowly dissolving in the bacteria the solution has helped create. The solution doesn't work instantly, but it does seem to be helping the coral breathe. A green moss grows between the cobblestones. Broken columns are arranged like sentinels around the royal gardens. The cobblestones were once a walkway through the ancient Greek garden. A glop of tar has fallen from the coral. Something white is sticking out of the tar. Adam picks the shell up from the tar. Ick! It's a nice roomy shell, but it won't be much use covered with tar like that. Woo! Things have gotten even worse since the last time I was here. I'm trying to help out in the fish apartments now, 
but I'm afraid I'm not much good at this sort of thing. Have you found the mayor or the guardian of the greens yet? Yep, I found both the mayor and the guardian of the greens. Good for you. What did the mayor say? Not much. I'm afraid he doesn't trust me because I'm a human boy. That's understandable, I guess, but not very fair. Maybe there's some way you can prove to the mayor that you're a good human. How? Does he have a problem? Maybe you can find something he really needs. Adam picks up the cotton cloth and carries it with him. You can hang out here if you want, Adam. I gotta go to the surface to breathe. See you back here later. Adam disposes of the yucky old shirt. Adam stuffs the Dodgers baseball cap into his garbage bag. Good thing he's a Giants fan. Adam gives the old shoe the old boot and trashes it. Be careful where... That's not... Adam cleans up the old plate. Adam doesn't need to get those pipes up. They've been here so long, they're part of the scenery now. Adam does... Adam squeezes the aluminum toothpaste tube into his garbage bag. Daydreaming of chocolates, Adam throws away the empty candy box. There's no gar... That's not... Be careful where you swing. Adam can't throw that. Adam burns the toaster. Adam puts the old sock in his garbage bag, thinking that it will never find its mate now. All right. Adam makes a clean sweep of the garbage around the fish apartments. Adam uses the rag to clean the oil and tar off the shell. He gets all the oil off the shell, but boy, that rag sure is oily now. Superfluous, come out and see what I brought you. I found you a new shell. You said your old one was pinching you. Oh, a nice clean shell. Thank you, it's ever so roomy. But why would a human boy do such a thing? I told you, I want to help Illyria. Nice fit. I don't know how to thank you. You know, maybe the citizens would listen to you after all. Oh, if only you could get them to come here. Why, maybe together we could all think of a way to save ourselves. I tell you what, I'll give you a deputy badge if you'll agree to help me get the citizens here for a council meeting. I'll do my best, Mr. Mayor. Here. Here's the badge. Now off with you, son, and don't let me down. Adam takes the deputy badge from Superfluous. Why, it's a starfish. Two Allurians swim into the courtyard, only to panic and run off. Adam wonders what on earth... Adam looks up in terror as a huge black shape glides like a cloud above him, blocking the surface light. The water tingles with a feeling of danger and evil. Adam is frozen in place with fear, unable to move a flipper.
the black monster finishes its path and slowly glides away. Adam, are you okay? Did I hurt you? Are you kidding? You saved my life. What was that thing? We call him Flesh Eater. He's the biggest, meanest manta anyone's ever seen. Most mantas are gentle, but this one's a real bone grinder. He started coming around just before Cetus vanished. He likes to come by and pick up Ilarians to eat. We seem to be his favorite food. That's awful. No wonder the citizens are hiding. The mayor asked me to see if I can get him to the council chambers. But why would they come out for me? The pollution is more of a danger to some Ilarians than Flesh Eater. Why don't you go visit the citizens in the fish apartments? If you can help them with their problems, they'd trust you then. I'll head on over to the council chambers and be the first one there. Good luck, Adam. Hey, what you doing there, stranger? I'd like to go inside and visit the fish. Nope, 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 no can do. I'm gregarious and I'm supposed to keep strangers out. That's my job. And I don't know you from Adam. But I am Adam. Sorry, sorry, no can do. You need a pass to get in. Yep, a pass. Where can I get that? You got me. <laughs> I'm just the watchman. Will this do? The mayor said it was a badge. Well, I'll be a starfish sticking to a reef shark's back. A badge from the mayor? Why didn't you say so, stranger? Um, visitor, feel free to look around. A plastic baggie floats down from the surface. before Adam can grab it. The little blowfish panics and inflates and gets stuck in his apartment window too fat to get through. The poor little blowfish is already having enough trouble with garbage. Adam pushes gently on the panicked blowfish, hoping to help him get back into his apartment. Adam's landed in the little blowfish's apartment and landed hard. Adam very carefully unwraps the plastic and frees the frightened blowfish. Are you okay? But of course, ah, Nelsusis cannot be distressed by mere mortal danger, mais no. I did not even see the jellyfish that attacked me until I ate it. It wasn't a jellyfish, it was a plastic baggie. A uh, human product, I'm afraid. A baggie? Plastic? How can I avoid what I cannot see? But who are you? And why are you so ugly, if you pardon my French? I'm Adam. And I'm a human boy. Haven't you ever seen a human before? But of course. I am not Le Beb. I have known many humans quite intimately. You're an artist, right? Is this your painting? Ah, my latest masterpiece. The negative space gives it a certain je ne sais quoi to this amusing little waterscape. Don't you agree? It's very nice. Well, it's finny now. I had a terrible time with it. Those sea urchins will not sit still. They have no appreciation for Le Artiste. Since you have saved my life, mon ami, why don't you take these petite sea urchins? It is a humble gift, perhaps, but then having the pleasure of meeting me more than compensates, n'est-ce pas? Thanks, Narcissus. Oh, and now that you're okay, the mayor would like to see you in the council's chambers for a meeting. The mayor? But of course he wants me there. 
Say no more, uh, boy. I go now. Bonne chance, mon ami. Adam picks up the plastic baggie and puts it in his garbage bag so that it won't be able to trap any other sea creatures. Narcissus's apartment light is out, now that he's left for the council chambers. Apparently, no one lives in this apartment. Whoa, dude! Who are you? I'm Adam. I came to tell you about a meeting the mayor's called in the council chambers. I'm Epidermis. I'd love to, like, surf on over there. But I got my own problems, man. Sorry. What's wrong? I'm gonna have to, like, remove myself from Alluria, man. Hit the road, wave a fin, become a memory. Way bummer, man. I'll be, like, totally lost out there in the big old sea, all by myself. Shark food, that's me. Why do you have to leave? I only eat one kind of plant, and we've been having this major algae problem. Just look at my potted garden. There's not one inch of algae-free leaf left in the whole city. Wow! My dad says chemical phosphate pollution in the water causes algae growth. But I never thought about it making fish's food grody. Phosphates, huh? Guess I'll have to, like, look for some place where there are no phosphates? No sharks or flesh-eaters, either. Oh. Adam is carrying sea urchins given to him by Narcissus in thanks for saving him from a plastic baggie. The sea urchins are small creatures that eat algae. Adam swims over to Epidermis' food plants and puts the sea urchins on the algae-covered leaves. The sea urchins begin to eat the algae. Gosh, they must have been hungry, too. Hey, what's the story with the sea urchins, dude? The sea urchins eat algae. They'll clean up your plants, okay? But we need a whole army of sea urchins to clean up all the algae in the city. Ah, uh, we can worry about that later, dude. For now, I'm just happy to have some food in my belly. Epidermis happily munches on the algae-free areas the urchins are making. Oh, way better. You think I should, like, go to the meeting after all? Sure. Maybe together you can think of a way to make things better in the city. And I could tell them about the urchins. Cool. I'm way glad I don't have to leave home. At least not right away. Let me give you one of my shells. I'm totally into shells. Maybe you can start your own collection. I like this one best because it's sharp as a knife. Just don't cut yourself, dude. And now I'm history, man. Like, hang cool. See you later. Bye, epidermis. And thanks for the shell. There's a poster of the talking fish heads on the wall. There's a poster of Marlon Monroe on the wall. Epidermis' apartment light is out now that he's left for the council chambers.
The swordfish has gotten his snout trapped in the plastic rings from a six-pack of soda. The plastic is tight and he can't open his mouth enough to eat. <laughs> I seem to have a problem, my good man. I guess so. That looks painful. How did you get your nose stuck in those plastic six-pack rings? I was digging for food like I always do. These abominations was under the fat. I have a shell with a sharp edge. Let me see if I can get the rings off. Be careful, young man. A snout is a terrible thing to waste. Ah, what blessed relief. I was afraid I was a bit doomed, good fellow, but your speedy and accurate surgical techniques were my salvation. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Hippocrates, chief sturgeon, uh, that is, surgeon of Aluria. And who might I have the pleasure of addressing? I'm Adam, a friend of Delphinius. Ah, a delightful chap, Delphinius, and in perfect medical condition. Do you need a checkup, lad? I must confess I know distressingly little about human anatomy, but you're simple creatures. It can't be that difficult. Uh, I don't need a checkup. I came to tell you about a meeting the mayor's called in the council chambers. A meeting? Good show. That's just the ticket for what ails us. Before I go, let me express my gratitude by giving you these fishbone tweezers. Perhaps they will serve you someday as you have served me. Adam catches the fishbone tweezers. Thank you, Hippocrates. Tis but a trifle. May you live many days, Adam, and be well. Adam picks up the six-pack rings. The bookcase contains Fishbein's medical encyclopedia. On the wall is a diploma from William and Moray College. Major ecological sensitivity man, Adam cuts apart the plastic circles of the six-pack rings and puts them in his garbage bag. Hippocrates' apartment light is out, now that he's left for the council chambers. The sea turtle can't talk to Adam while his throat is blocked. The sea turtle can't... The poor sea turtle appears to have something stuck in his throat. He's having trouble breathing. A long white string hangs from his throat. Now where has Adam seen string like that before? The cloth has oil on it from cleaning the oily shell. Adam is carrying one of Epidermis's shells. It's a small, sharp shell, as sharp... Adam is carrying fishbone tweezers that were given to him by Hippocrates in thanks for getting a set of six-pack rings off his snout. I'm going to try to get the blockage out of your throat. Steady now. Adam grasps the string with the tweezers and pulls. Boy, it's really in there. Well, that didn't help much. The string came off, but whatever is stuck in the turtle's throat is still in there. Let's try this again. Open wide now. 
Adam uses the tweezers to reach carefully into the sea turtle's mouth and grasp the end of the object blocking his small throat. I say that was terribly nice of you. I was having the most dreadful time breathing. That was a balloon I pulled out of your throat. Why'd you eat that? I mistook it for a particularly delectable dark comestible. My error, and a nearly fatal one. My throat, you see, is quite miniature. The rubbery texture of that balloon blocked it completely. They sometimes find huge whales who have been killed just by swallowing a little balloon. Ah, yes, my equally small-throated brothers. But I get ahead of myself. I am erroneous, professor of most of the fish in these parts. It's a pleasure to finally meet a human. I've taken quite a scholastic interest in you, as a species, that is. I noticed the flag. I'm Adam, and I actually find animals more interesting than humans. But maybe that's because I am one. Ah, yes. We're often intrigued with the unknown. The mayor sent me to tell the citizens about a meeting at the council chambers. Well, I shall certainly want to contribute to that ostentatious affair. But first, let me persuade you to assume responsibility for these four little human objects I found. They might be troublesome if left floating about. Four metal screws? Yes. The size makes them particularly likely candidates for swallowing. I'll take care of them for you. Well, I'll go join my fellow citizens now. Be well, my human friend. It's been a pleasure. Adam picks up the deflated balloon and puts it into his garbage bag so that another animal doesn't swallow it. Adam picks up the deflated balloon and puts it into his garbage bag so that another animal doesn't There's a flag of Great Britain on the wall. How curious. The bookcase holds waterlogged copies of the Encyclopedia Britannica A through G as well as other more popular fish press titles. Erroneous's apartment light is out. Well, what you need now, Adam? Why are you so blue, Gregarious? I'm, uh, holding my breath. Why on earth are you doing that? You see these bandages? I keep getting hit by the same dumb speedboat every time I go up to the surface to breathe. Dang propellers. I'm just not going up there no more. But you're a mammal. You have to go up to breathe real air or you'll suffocate. Nope, 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 don't care. I ain't going. That propeller has gotten the last piece of gregarious a manatee by a gill. How about if I go up there with you? You can show me the boat while we're up there. Maybe I can do something about their propellers. Gee, Adam, you do that? <laughs> what a pal. Follow me. Adam follows Gregarious as he leads the way up out of the city towards the ocean's surface. A load of garbage appears from somewhere above. Ouch! Oh. It sure feels good to breathe. Is this the boat? Yup. Gosh darn propellers anyway. Hey, Mr. Fisherman. What? Who said that? I'm down here. Oh, a diver, eh? 
Why didn't you say so, cockamamie kids? We just... What's that? Creatures, is it? What do you think I'm fishing for? The ocean's a big place, matey. That little bit of trash ain't gonna hurt them fishies none. But it does. You wouldn't believe all the trash down there. Anyway, that's not what I came to talk to you about. It's about Gregarious. Gregarious? That's a heck of a name for just a dumb manatee. And what's all them bandages for, anyhow? Because you keep hitting him with your propellers. My propellers? You mean my propellers did that? He says every time he comes up to breathe, your boat runs into him. Well, I'll be a land lover. What do I do about that? Let me know if you think of something to do with them propellers. Adam attaches the four screws to the steel cage. You want to give me a hand with this, Gregarious? Sure, Adam. Adam and Gregarious swim under the boat to attach the cage to the propellers. With Gregarious's help, Adam fits the steel cage over the propellers and fastens it on with the four screws. Oh, I see what you're talking about now. That cage jimmies right over them propellers, don't it? Yep. Now you don't have to worry about the manatees. Thanks, son. You're not too bad for a kid. Thanks for making my boat safe. Guess I'll think about what you said about the garbage dumping. Thanks. Bye now. Thank you, Adam. Now I can breathe any time I want to. Will you go to the mayor's meeting at the council chambers now? Well, I'll have to wait till everyone's out of the apartments. I am the watchman, you know. But I'll go along as soon as I can. Okay, bye. The water pump is still working. Perhaps throwing it away is a bit rash. Adam snags the still functional water pump. Adam just says no and trashes the wine bottle. Adam gives the sushi a decent burial. All right! Adam makes a clean sweep of the garbage around the fish apartments. The lionfish is unconscious. She can't talk to Adam now. Oh no! A bottle of chlorine bleach! Tropical fish collectors use bleach to stun fish so that they can catch them easily. The lionfish must have found the bottle up on the reef. Adam picks up the bleach bottle and stores it away in his garbage bag. That stops new bleach from leaking into the water, but the apartment is still full of this stuff. This apartment has a window to the outside. Adam is carrying a water pump. Adam uses the water pump to cycle the old contaminated water out into the much bigger area of the open sea. The room slowly clears of bleach. Oh my! What happened here? You used a bottle of bleach for your table and the bleach knocked you out. I'm afraid bleach is one of those man-made dangers you'll have to watch out for. How are you feeling now? Hi, I'm fine. Just a little woozy. My name's Olympia. Who are you? I'm Adam. I'm here to tell our citizens about a meeting in the council chambers. The mayor's asked everybody to come. A meeting? You mean with other fish? 
I, I don't know. I'm pretty shy, I'm afraid. I don't like crowds. Why not? Well, it's my spines, you see. They're quite poisonous. I can't help it, you know, but there it is. I'm always afraid that others will be afraid of me, or that somehow accidentally... But you can't just hide in your room. Everyone needs friends. Listen to me, I sound just like my dad. I guess he's right after all. Anyway, I think you're really nice, and I think your spines are cool. You like my spines? I never thought anyone would like my spines. Well, maybe I could go. It is important, I think. Maybe your spines could help other citizens. If you truly like my spines, perhaps you'll accept a small gift for saving my life. This locket contains one of my baby spines. It's quite potent, though. Be careful how you use it. Wow! A lionfish spine! Neat! Thanks, Olympia! Goodbye, Adam. May you be free from stings as long as you live. Well, all the citizens are gone now. I'm off to the council chambers for the meeting. See you there. <laughs> Because of you, we Allurians are ready to help ourselves. The new cleanup committee will keep the dangerous garbage from building up around the city, and the Flesh Eater Watch will sound the alarms whenever that horrible monster gets close. And thanks to your little lesson, we know a lot more about the dangers of human garbage and how to avoid them. I wish I could do more. I wish I could stop all this stuff from bothering you at all. Well, when you return to your world, just remember that feeling, and maybe you can help things get better someday. For now, why don't you take this gold mask as a sign of our gratitude? I don't need it anymore. The citizens seem to actually listen to me as little old superfluous. The great senator is gone for good. Thanks, superfluous. I mean, Mr. Mayor. Illyria is safe for the moment. What do you mean? Well, the cleanup crews can't stop that horrid green ooze in the water, and Flesh Eater will keep haunting us. And then there's our food supply. I think we still have to find Cetus, Adam. Now that the city is okay for a while, I think it's time to go search for him. How do we start? Remember, the Oracle wanted to see you again? Let's see what she has to say. An odd carving of the trident pushes in. The citizens must give their trust to you alone. Win them, you must. This sign of trust bring back to me. And you shall have the prophecy. Adam hands the gold mask to the oracle, holding his breath with anticipation. A sign of trust is given to me, a mask of gold for all to see. Poseidon's favor has been won by the child Adam.
the chosen one. Here now is the prophecy. In the place where shadows creep, rest the poison of the deep. What came from man must now return, lest the kingdom die, the oceans burn. Held hostage is the king of peace. None shall be safe till he is released. Only love can face the one most vile to save us all, a human child. But how can I save the kingdom? Only fragments can I see, but let me tell them now to thee. Armor for a modern knight, from the depths a glowing light, a net of bones, a wall of stones, a floating orb, a silver wire, will help you in a place most dire. Here on parchment are the clues. May Poseidon watch all you. Adam takes a parchment scroll containing the prophecy from the oracle. Wow, a prophecy. And to think I didn't know if I should bring you, Adam. Let's get started on our quest outside the city. Come on, Adam. There's a reef south of the city. Let's head out and see what we can find. This is it, Adam. We're on our own now. Right out here in the open sea. What an adventure, huh? You're not nervous, are you, Dolphinius? Who, me? Master of Control? Nervous? We've got the prophecy, and we've got our natural talent. So hey, what the heck? Flesh Eater, beware, right? Right, let's explore. Can you stand it? These little fish just love mirrors. They think there's another fish in there. I'm glad I'm one of the higher mammals. The sodden doll goes into the garbage bag. The damsel fish is startled by Adam's approach. She gives up looking at the other fish in the mirror and swims away. The tasteless underwear goes into the garbage bag. Adam puts the teddy bear into the garbage bag. Squawk! Well, the flamingo would say that if it could. Adam puts the plastic flamingo in the garbage bag. Good job! Adam wins the Recycle Champ Award. Adam picks up the old rearview mirror and puts it away. Hey, cool! There was a diver down here the other day using something like that to attract the fish. Nice to find somebody who wants to make friends rather than collect us. Someone beheaded the Colossus that guarded the harbor a long time ago. Here it lies and could tell many a tale if such statues could talk. It seems to have something stuck in its ear. A large shape is huddled in the lair, but Adam can't see it clearly. On a hunch, Adam puts the jar down in front of the dark opening. 
Let's back off, Adam, and see what happens. I think I hear something in that hole. Find some place to hide. Hey, you're no amateur. Breaking the coral would kill it, you know. Hey, you're no... Hey, you're... The skeleton of the brain coral has some interesting openings. A beautiful array of coral formations continues here but weakens towards the east. A beautiful array of... A colony of common sponge is building itself up here. A colony... These are living sponges, so Adam shouldn't pick them. Adam burrows into the soft sponges. From this comfortable hiding spot, he peers out at the octopus. Look it! An octopus! They're curious about everything, but kind of cranky. The octopus thinks he's alone now. He sneaks a tentacle out and grabs hold of the jar. He thoroughly explores the jar. Look at that! He untwisted the lid! Kind of the can opener of the sea. <laughs> Adam picks up the open jar but keeps one eye on the octopus. That's certainly nothing that Adam shines the mirror toward the octopus. The octopus peers into the mirror. Red with rage, he charges out to fight the other octopus. Whoops! The octopus sees Adam, a human. White with fear, he shoots a cloud of ink and flees. Phew, just like skunks. Actually, like octopi. That ink's supposed to be like a fake octopus to throw you off the track. Adam reaches down and pulls out the cable. A gleaming wire. I'm beginning to get an idea about what the oral... Adam, I think I hear someone calling. It seems to be coming from somewhere above us. Oh dear, some fish fell for a line, so to speak. You might say it was lured into difficulties. Why not just say it's a fishing lure? What, and miss the chance for a witty reply? Adam picks up the brightly colored fishing lure. Some kind of underwater maintenance vehicle has broken down here. The fish and plants are slowly taking it over. A storage panel is just behind the sodden seats. There's just no privacy on this reef. We're going back to the city. Gross me out. It's a mess in there. Adam picks up the hammer, but it crumbles into rust. Adam picks up the steel saw. More glowing dead fish litter the ocean floor here. Adam notices an increasing number of them to the east. The toilet tank is on its side. The lid is jammed over the tank at one corner.
Adam places the trident under one corner of the tank lid and yanks. The lid pops off and falls to the sand. Adam pulls the toilet float from inside the tank. What's this round thing? Oh, I know. It's called a float. Round. Let's see. What does that remind me of? It's the prophecy again. A floating orb. Not what I expected at all. Even the oracle has a sense of humor, I suppose. This guy is always eating. I tell him, hey, slow down. Anemones are like goats. They'll eat anything. His stomach is like a big sack. He can only eat one thing at a time. If he can't digest it, he'll throw it up after a while. Barfarama! I know. That's why I don't eat dinner with anemones too often. I just love it down here. It's what the ocean looked like before all the pollution. The pirate ghost has the job of guarding the treasure. The pirate chief made sure he wouldn't quit. Dreaming of pirate treasure, Adam opens the chest. A tiny blue crab has been napping in the chest. He scuttles away to find new shelter. I guess he was napping. Not a good place for it. The chest was empty except for the crab. Someone else has been here recently. Unless, of course, you believe in hundred-year-old crabs. No doubt this is a skeleton key. The key's stuck under the pike tip. The key's stuck under the... The key's stuck... I think I felt it give a little. The pike snaps into pieces and the key goes flying into the water. <clears throat> Out of nowhere, a lurking fish darts forward. Hey, you give that back. He swallowed it. He swallowed it. I can't believe it. After him, Adam. What a pig. The red fish streaks across the reef toward the east. Psych! The red fish takes off again. The red fish keeps up the speed as it heads back the way it came.
Adam is carrying a shielded cable, the gleaming wire from the Oracle's prophecy. The brightly colored fishing lure has lost its hook and is now harmless. It still looks like dinner to fish, though. Rats! We lost him! Where'd he go? Don't know, Adam, but I do know he's packing iron. <laughs> Adam moves the bright fishing lure in front of the anemone. I guess that'll show him to get grabby. Adam picks up the key and tries not to think about where it's been. Adam senses some movement inside the ear. The flashlight fish darts into the jar and settles in the bottom. Wow, look at that glowing light, just like the oracle said. Adam carefully places the glowing jar in his backpack. Oh, horrible. This must be the net of bones in the Oracle's prophecy. It's a drift net, Dolphinius. Just like the one you were caught in before you came to my dad's lab. Why do men create things like this, Adam? I just don't understand. It's used for commercial fishing. There are floats at the top and weights at the bottom to keep the net vertical in the water. The fishermen leave it out and come back later for their catch. But the net doesn't care what it catches, so dolphins and other creatures that aren't any use to fishermen die too. And the nets sometimes get lost. Like this one. Unattended nets will just float and kill forever. It's like a time bomb that just keeps going off. I'll tell you a secret, Adam. M my family died this way. At least the Oracle told me she saw a net in her visions after they disappeared. I'm sorry, Del. My mom's gone too. I never even knew her, but I miss her a lot. So does my dad. Maybe that's why we make such good friends, Adam. Hey, do you think we could get away from this thing now? There's no... There's nothing Adam can do about the drift net right now. Adam is carrying one of epidermis. There's nothing. There's nothing. Don't worry. I'll get you out. Easy now. Don't pinch me. Persephone, you better go home now to your mother, Demeter. She's been worried sick. Good going, Adam. At least you have the thumbs for the job. I can't see where I'm going. Let's get out of here before we get hurt. Adam holds out the glowing jar. The flashlight fish senses the friendly dark of the cave. Gathering courage, it swims out of the jar and settles down between two rocks. What a relief. Now I can see where I'm going. 
Adam puts the empty jar into his recycle bag. Adam reaches up and pulls on one of the brownish rocks. It falls easily to the floor of the cave. A strange green light seeps through the small hole. Another rock pulls out easily. It must not have been there very long. Hey, those are coming out. No problemo. Yeah, it feels more to me like somebody put these here. The greenish color of the water intensifies. <laughs> I think something's happening to the water, Adam. I'm getting dizzy. My sonar feels a little off or something. Should I stop? No, we've got to find out what's on the other side. The light strikes something hidden behind the rocks. The light strikes something hidden behind the rocks. A metal box has been concealed in a pile of rocks. Bummer, it's locked. The key turns halfway in the lock and then stops. It seems that salt water has rusted the mechanism. No! It's too dangerous to go in there. I can sense things that you can't, and I have a very bad feeling about this. The light strikes something hidden behind The light strikes The light strikes The light strikes a metal box Adams carrying a transmitter from Adam is carrying the healing potion that Demeter the guardian of the greens gave Adams carrying one of Olympia's lionfish spines Adam eases the lock with the oily rag The key turns smoothly in the oiled lock. The box pops open to reveal a suit of protective clothing. Bizarre. What is it? I've seen clothes like this. They protect your skin from chemicals. Armor for a modern night. Do you suppose this is it? <laughs> Adam
Adam feels an immediate relief. Whatever was in the water was making it really hard to think. Adam, I can't go any farther. Whatever is in this water is really affecting me. I'll wait right here as long as I can take it. Adam signals OK to Delphinius. A group of metal drums lie rusting in this hidden spot. A familiar greenish glow seeps from the rusting patches in the metal. Now Adam realizes what the oracle meant by poison of the deep. The deadly poison which lurks in the drums has been slowly released into the water, bringing disaster to the reef. Adam is carrying a shielded cable, the gleaming wire from the Oracle's prophecy. Adam fixes the sonar transmitter to the float. Adam attaches the impromptu satellite buoy to the cable. Adam turns on the transmitter and attaches his improvised satellite buoy to the barrel. The float rises toward the surface. The transmitter is emitting a constant, powerful signal. Adam watches from a distance as the divers carefully collect the drums. Grimly, they bear them to the surface and stow them on the boat for safe disposal on land. Adam gives the metal box and suit as evidence of illegal dumping. He returns to the reef to find Delphinius and continue the search for Cetus. Adam, you did it! The poison is gone! The first part of the prophecy is fulfilled! They've taken it away, that's true, but I'm afraid it will be a long time before anything can survive here. We also have to worry about catching the people who did this. It looks to me like they've been using this spot for a while. But that's something I'll have to leave up to my dad. And we still haven't found Cetus. The skeletons of unfortunate creatures who wandered here cover the floor of the cave. The ship's cabin door is jammed shut. A cable from the harpoon gun is caught in a corner of the cabin door. The harpoon gun is a reminder of the dreadful practice of whale hunting. This one has been triggered. The cable from the harpoon is still attached to the gun. Adam, I don't like the looks of it here. But behind you! Flesh Eater, run! Adam and Delphinius flee in terror from the huge flesh eating monster. With a feeling of utter helplessness, Adam prepares to feel the sharp bite of Flesh Eater's jaws. The monster is so close that his hot wake ruffles the back of Adam's neck. In their panicked terror of the danger behind them, Adam and Delphinius failed to notice the danger in front of them. They both plow head first into the drift net. The nylon mesh wraps its arms around them. The two are trapped. Dolphinius, we're trapped. Adam, you've got to save yourself. I'll never get out of this thing, but you still have a chance. I won't leave you, Del. So what? We both end up manta food? Do it, Adam. Save yourself. Adam waits for the manta to finish them off. Two helpless victims trapped in the net. 
To his surprise, Flesh Eater only circles them. Adam maneuvers the sharp shell around and begins to rub it against the nylon net. The shell saws through the nylon, loosening the net's grasp on Adam. He's free! You did it, Adam! Now get out of here, fast! Are you crazy? What kind of friend do you think I am? Adam turns back frantically to cut loose his friend. But before he can free Delphinius, Flesh Eater swoops in. Enraged to see one of his victims escape and determined not to lose the other, he seizes the net with poor Delphinius still in it and knocks Adam aside with one flick of his huge wing. Adam, find Cetus. Only he can save me now. Adam finds himself suddenly alone. The drift net with its precious cargo and the monster are gone. What on earth, Adam thinks, can he do now? And will he ever see Delphinius again? Adam wedges the trident under the crack of the bloated ship's door and pushes on the handle as hard as he can. The waterlogged wood suddenly gives way and the door pops free of its frame. The cable that had been jammed under the door suddenly jerks tight as though pulled by a mighty weight. And through the open ship's door, Adam hears a sound. A sound unmistakably sad, unmistakably deep, Unmistakably haunting. Unmistakably a whale's call. The whale call is louder here. It's echoing down from somewhere above the ship. Adam holds his breath with anticipation and swims up to investigate. following the taut cable up and up towards the surface light. Up and up, not looking where he's going. Until suddenly... Whoa! It's Cetus! The mighty Cetus floats helplessly near the ocean's surface. He is terribly still. With a mixture of joy and fear, Adam approaches the mighty whale. Your Majesty! You're hurt! No wonder you've been missing. You're trapped here by that harpoon. Yes, child. And you are the one foretold. I fear you may be too late. But what happened? How did you get harpooned? It was Flesh Eater. I heard him cry out and went to help. He tricked me into the whaler's path. Can't you get free? You can't just die. Illyria needs you. The harpoon holds me fast. I cannot get it out of my mouth. I am so weak. 
I have not long. Cetus sinks into unconsciousness and his great eye shuts. The harpoon wound has become infected and he is near starvation from being trapped in this one spot. Cetus is getting weaker by the moment. The back of the whale's mouth is closed here. Adam will have to get further away from the whale if he wants to get in Cetus's mouth. From here, Adam can see that unconscious Cetus's jaw has grown slack. His mouth opens and closes in a regular rhythm. Adam decides to make a dash for Cetus's moving mouth. Adam will have to time. Adam decides. Adam uses the industrial saw, the barbed harpoon head. Adam's voice echoes back to him. Though Adam has removed the harpoon head, the harpoon shaft is... Now that the head of the harpoon... Now that... Cetus has lost... Adam decides to get close... Adam carefully... Adam uses Demeter's precious store of men. Cetus, you're awake. Are you feeling okay? Are you going to make it? Be calm, child. I am much better. I feel the wound already healing. You have saved me. Now that you're better, we have to save Dolphinius. Flesh Eater took him and he's in terrible danger. Flesh Eater, it is time to end the killing. I will call him forth. You must go rescue the dolphin. Meanwhile, Delphinius is reliving the nightmare of being trapped in a drift net, unable to reach the surface for air, unable to free himself. This time, however, Flesh Eater is there to add to his terror as he circles the dolphin, waiting for his victim's struggles to cease. Just as Delphinius arrives at a grim acceptance of his fate, a challenge echoes from outside the lair. Rise, cowardly one. Leave your foul lair and prepare to meet your doom. No more shall you trouble my people, for Cetus has returned. Enraged that the great king has escaped his prison, Flesh Eater wheels from the cave. Go into the lair. Save the dolphin while you can, little one, before it's too late. Now that Flesh Eater is distracted by the... Oh 
man, I'm glad you showed up. I'm about ready to suffocate. I hate this nylon stuff. I'm cutting as fast as I can. Hold on, Dolphinius, just another second. I promise. I'm out here to grab some air, dude. Can't stop the chat. I'll see you outside. That's an interesting thought. It doesn't work, though. Adam arms himself with a tiny lionfish spine and with all the courage he can muster and heads towards the black monster. But before he can wield his weapon, he is spotted by the manta and flicked disdainfully away. He'll have to get more careful in his approach if he's to get close enough to use the spine. Adam arms himself with a... While the manta is distracted by Cetus, Adam manages to get close to one huge black wing and pierce the tough hide with the lionfish spine. There's a moment of terror in which Adam is sure the poison will not be enough to even slow down the huge beast. But it's enough to make him hesitate in his attack, if only for a moment. And that moment is enough. Cetus, it's really you. And you killed Flesh Eater. Unbelievable. I'm glad to see you safe, my gray friend. But the Manta is not dead, only stunned. There will be time for all that later. Right now, there's a city I'm longing to see and a hero to be thanked. But where were you and how did Adam find you and why did you disappear for so long and how? In a true champion's welcome, Adam rides on the back of King Cetus in a slow procession to the city. Cetus bellows an announcement of their triumphant return. Come forth, children. Greet thy king and the boy called Adam. Adam slips off the back of the mighty whale and swims to join the happy Allurians. Congratulations, Adam. Oh, I'm so moved. Boo-hoo. Bravo. I knew a strapping lad like you could do it. Like, unbelievably radical, Adam did. Made your way to go. You have proven yourself one with the greens, Adam. Good show, old boy. Quite spectacular indeed. You're a real hero now, Adam. <laughs> it is well that you did the job, Adam, since I did not have the time. You did almost as well as I would have, mon ami. You were very, very brave, Adam. Child of man, to you we owe our lives. Our thanks we now bestow. Adam, you have rescued me from certain death. You have helped put an end to Flesh Eater's reign of terror. You have saved Illuria from ruin. You have made us believe that mankind is perhaps not the enemy we feared it to be. That man can even be a friend. Thank you, Great Cetus. I have learned much from all of you, too.
Take this conch, if you ever need a friend in the sea. Blow the conch, and help will come. Poseidon's conch! Wow! Thank you, your majesty! Now, home with you, child. Delphinius, I believe your friend could use a ride back to the land of men. He looks a little worn out. Yes, sir, your majesty. Grab a fin, Adam. Adam bids farewell to Illyria and King Cetus and grabbing on to Delphinius' dorsal fin, hangs on tight for the long ride home. Delphinius! Yeah, Adam. Will I ever see you again? What? Are you kidding? You and your dad, Diver Dan's? You'll see a hundred dolphins in your lifetime, Adam. One of these days, one of those dolphins will be me. I love you, Dolphinius. I'll get out of here, you nut, yeah. I love you too. <laughs>